bit of an unusual meeting today, but uh, we appreciate all those who have joined us virtually and, and the handful we have here in the chamber. I assure everyone who's not here that we are representing uh, well and, and have our six feet of separation. Um, because we have the technology that we do and we're trying to be as safe as we can, we have a number of the commissioners who are dialing in remotely and we've encouraged that. And uh, a few of us are, are up here with, with great separation, but we're gonna conduct the meeting virtually and uh, the mayor's gonna still be leading us and we will get everything done that we would normally do. All right, so we are calling our meeting to order and what I did not get in front of me is my agenda. The first item would be, Scott, just real quickly. Uh, city manager, city manager's report, sir. Okay, city manager report, please go ahead, Tony. Th thank you, Mr. Mayor, thank you, commissioners. Uh, I will give you a very brief report of where we're at today, or at least some of the things that have happened in the city uh, regarding city operations. Uh, after I do that, I'm gonna ask Audrey Kane, who is on, uh, to give a report from our emergency management operations. Um, with that, as you know, there are a number of facilities that are currently closed within the city, lobbyways and buildings, as well as parks and recreation facilities. Those continue to, to remain closed. I know there'll be a discussion today about city park closures. Uh, as far as our operations are concerned within our facilities, everything seems to be going smooth really appreciate the community and the fact that the community has really embraced the fact that we are in this situation. They are working very closely with our departments in order to make sure that the requirements of, that they need and the client issues that they have and the businesses that they need to go ahead and continue to operate are working with our base departments and so far have not heard of any real concerns. Uh, I sent to you earlier in the week a CISA release or a version 2.0 of essential critical infrastructure structure worker guidance. Obviously, if first, at some time and now or in the future, if the city commission looks to do a safer at home or something along those lines, this guidance on essential critical infrastructure workers and those operations that are considered essential within not just our organization, but throughout the city could come as a great template. I've also provided this to our city attorney so that he can take that into account if ever the commission wanted to move forward in that direction. Um, as you have heard on March 25th of this year, Scott Rifkes, the uh, state surgeon general and state health officer determined that a public health advisory was necessary regarding the COVID-19 challenges. One of the things that came up in the advisory was that individuals over the age of 65 or any individuals that have high risk conditions should consider remaining in residence or take some measures to limit those risks. Once again, this is an advisory. I know Audrey can talk a little bit more about this, but this is an advisory, but we've gone ahead and provided it on our websites and provided it to our city staff so that they understand exactly where we're at today. And if anything were to change, we would start moving in those directions. Our remote from home statistics, uh, those are operations that are currently city operations reworking from home. We've peaked at about 490, well, peaked at almost 500 users. So a big majority of our staff that can work from home is working from home. Uh, and we're happy that is helping us with our uh, social distancing, distancing, excuse me, requirements within the city. Uh, also based on last week's briefing uh, regarding first responders and those testing protocols, uh, the two, the one firefighter that was tested came back negative. We have a second firefighter that's been tested, still waiting on uh, the, that uh, information on that test. But in light of the fact that many of our first responders may be in need, and I'm talking from a statewide perspective, the Florida Fire Chiefs Association and Chief Riley has developed and forwarded a correspondence to the Chief Financial Officer, Jimmy Patronis of the state to address that is issue. Chief Riley will keep us informed once we receive some of that information back from the state. Lakeland Electric remains in phase three emergency warning. Basic, uh, roughly 17% of our workforce is now working from home in Lakeland Electric. They are using a variety of tools to stay connected and continue business operations. 
new procedures have been in, implemented to create greater distance between employees and all of our electric facilities. And obviously every effort is being made to safeguard employees. Customer needs are still being met, even without direct contact. Our lobby and drop box remain closed. Our direct customer service contact through meetings and our in-home energy audits are suspended. The call volume in our call center has dropped dramatically, likely in response to the temporary suspending of disconnects and late fees to, assess our, to assist our community members who are facing financial hardship. New construction is still progressing. However, we are watching signs for that slowing down. We've launched a new page on our website for customers looking for information on our COVID-19 response. That is lakelandelectric.com slash about us slash COVID-19 response. Anytime there's a, uh, there are no shelter in place orders issued by Polk County or the city of Lakeland, and we will continue to monitor this from a Lakeland Electric perspective and work to continue to provide energy to our customers that are in need, and we'll seek the best way to do that safely if those things happen. Our community and economic development team have been able to facilitate virtual inspections, something we talked about earlier in the week, to assist our inspectors with safety protocols through this COVID-19 challenge. Uh, in continuing that response, all occupational res resident dwelling units will begin virtual inspections uh, effective last Wednesday, and so far we've seen uh, a good response utilizing that. One of the things that was talked about in our last briefing was a relaxation of the sign ordinance and code enforcement actions on the sign ordinance based on the city commission's implementation request. Immediately after that meeting, uh, staff authorized our code enforcement team to take a hands-off approach to all but the most uh, serious violations. And we've stopped enforcing the sign regulations for the next 60 days. This moratorium does not apply to signs placed illegally within public right-of-ways but if the sign in question is adjacent to a business, it, will, it advertises, we will meet with the owner, make sure the guidance is, is there for them and allow that to be done. We're already active, uh, where already active cases are concerned, staff will ev evaluate them on a case by case basis. Those that haven't been scheduled for hearings will be delayed 60 days. Those that have been scheduled for hearings should be reviewed and delayed if possible. Those already accruing fines should continue as normal as the moratorium doesn't actually change the law. Uh, any complaints that come forward or any additional guidance, Brian Ruiz, our Assistant Community and Economic Development Director, as well as Nicole Travis, our Community and Economic Development Director, will work with those clients. Uh, as you are aware, many city departments have established online services and in-person appointments, and they're available in advance for some business functions. Signage has been placed in all our facilities. The facility closure is for 30 days. However, with the new president's uh, directive, we will be uh, increase, uh, We'll be implementing that through May 1st now, because I think the new directive has following CDC regulations or CDC suggestions through April 30th. So the Lakeland Electric, Lakeland Police Department, Lakeland Fire Department, as well as the Parks and Recreation Department has facilities that are closed at this point and community and economic development continue building inspection, business tax, tax office operations, code enforcement operations, and other needs from community redevelopment agency by appointment or by phone, email, or through online meetings. One of the things that I'm going to propose and actually going to go ahead and implement starting tomorrow, there are significant crowds continuing to congregate in Munn Park during the day and the weekend. The ability to enforce social distancing protocols and staff's inability to, to continuously clean the seating and table amenities are especially difficult. That being the case, I'm going to ask our Parks and Recreation Department to remove the table and chair sets, only the table and chair sets, from the area beginning tomorrow morning. We will continue to maintain all benches, and hopefully that will help with some of the social distancing concerns that are out there and some of the issues regarding trying to maintain and clean those as people continue to use them. There is a memorandum of understanding with our healthcare system, health, health stat for utilization of a virtual healthcare services. This is tele, telehealth. So our employees will be able to go ahead starting April 1st, utilizing a telehealth option. Phone numbers will be uh, implemented and provided to all our employees so that uh, they can start utilizing that option rather than trying to schedule appointments with our health stat in-house clinic. 
Staff is also quickly reviewing and putting together protocol calls and uh, FAQs for the implementation of our Family First Coronavirus Response Act, which is expected to be a, uh, implemented on April 2nd. I've taken the liberty of attaching some of those for you in the past, uh, as well as some FAQs. Uh, we hope to have those uh, frequently asked questions available for all our employees by tomorrow or at, at the very least Wednesday. So those who can utilize that new act can be directed in the, in the right place to go ahead and file the proper applications in the proper forms. With that, that's the end of my update at this point, and I'll pass it back to the mayor. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Audrey Kane. Audrey, are you ready? Yes, I am. I just need to have the screen for a moment. All right, Audrey, you're set. Okay. So good afternoon, uh, commissioners, mayor, and the city managers. So this is Audrey Kane, emergency manager for the city of Lakeland. I just wanna thank you all for allowing me to provide you with an update on the COVID-19. Currently in our surrounding counties, the positive cases of COVID-19 is with Hillsborough County at 253, Manatee County, 39, Osceola County, 94, Orange County, 293, Sumter County, 46, and Pasco County at 38, and finally at Polk County at 55, and this was as the 11 a.m. update. When it comes to our PPE resource requests uh, for critical personal protective equipment and supplies that cannot be obtained commercially, um, they are being submitted through the Pope County Emergency Operations Center and into the state. And as they come in, they are being distributed when acquired. As you can see by the map on the right, Pope County sits in part um, of region four, which is the green counties. I have added the positive case numbers from two counties in region five as they border Polk County. In region four and five, currently there are stay in or safer at home orders in the following areas. Hillsborough County, to include the city of Tampa, Pinellas County, Orange County, Orlando, and Osceola County. While there is not yet a stay at home order covering the entire state of Florida, many jurisdictions have restrictions in effect or going into effect. On the state level, Governor Ron DeSantis issued an executive order on Monday, March 23rd for travelers flying into or in from New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut to stop the spread of the virus from one of the nation's coronavirus hotspots. He updated the order to include those traveling by other means such as cars and trains. The governor also added Louisiana to the list of states as hotspots. Anyone traveling, <clears throat> excuse me, from these states will have to do a mandatory self-isolation for 14 days or the duration of their stay. The Department of Health is currently screening those who have entered Florida from the tri-state areas and Louisiana. Florida State Surgeon General, Mr. Ripkes, did issue a public health advisory to all individuals over the age of 65 and all individuals of any age with high risk conditions to include diabetes or um, lung issues that they should remain in their residence and take all measures to limit their access or risk of exposure to COVID-19. This is just an advisory and is not a directive. On Thursday last week, in coordination with Polk County Emergency Management, the City of Lakeland Emergency Management, United Way, Salvation Army, Feed Tampa Bay, and other community partners started discussing the development of a disaster feeding plan for the county. 
mass feeding and hydration services will be needed for the general population. And we anticipate in the long term adding financial and mental health support as well to the communities and citizens of Polk County. President Donald J. Trump declared that a major disaster existed in the state of Florida and ordered a federal assistance to supplement the state, tribal, and local recovery efforts in the areas affected by the coronavirus pandemic. Retroacting this back to January 20th, 2020 and continuing on. The president's action must makes federal funding available for crisis counseling for affected individuals in all areas in the state of Florida. The Federal Coordinating Officer for Recovery Operations in the affected areas of Florida has been appointed and information and processes will start to arrive for Florida residents and entities. For public assistance, FEMA reimburses state and local governments and certain types of private nonprofit organizations for the cost of their disaster related expenses. Emergency protective measures taken to protect life and property under the COVID category B. And currently in the city, we have several um, departments that are keeping track of all of their documentations for this. Individual assistance is currently limited to crisis counseling programs, which is available in all areas in the state of Florida. The mission of the program is to assist individuals and communities in recovering from the phys physiological effects of natural, and human caused disasters through the provision of community-based outreach and educational services. Additional designations may be made at a later date if requested by the state and warranted by the results of further assessments. Here you can see Polk County in the state of Florida in a snapshot today provided by the Health Department of Health at their 11 a.m. update. This current graph shows the virus does not age discriminate and positive cases are starting to increasingly affect the age groups from 25 to 54. The graph at the bottom of the Polk County map shows the increase of cases since the first known case on March 17th. Today's totals will be calculated after the 6 p.m. update. I wanna thank all of you, the commissioners, the mayor and the city managers for allowing me to provide you with this update. Mr. Mayor, if uh, anyone has a question for Audrey yeah. or myself, um, yes. this, this will be the time. Are there any questions from commissioners? And Audrey, thank you for that report. N not a question, Mr. Mayor, but if I could, please. Yes. Mr. Commissioner Walker, yes, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Kane. Uh, I know I reached out to her latter part of the week. I had a couple of questions from some people in my particular district area about uh, testing and that kind of thing. And she's very prompt. Uh, thank you again, Ms. Uh, Ms. Kane, for responding to that email that I sent to you, uh, providing the information as best you could, based on the information we know we have about testing here in our, in our county and in our greater Lakeland community. So I want to say thank you for that and want to make sure, you know, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other comments from commissioners? Uh, yes, Commissioner McLeod. Tony, uh, thank you for your update and just for the work that you and your staff are doing every day. Um, as you were talking about the employees who are working remotely and different changes to operations, are there any challenges that have been surprises or things that you've, you all have run into that you're having to work through or maybe you didn't think would be an issue, but you found it to be? And just I'm just curious just um, if there's anything you have on that. Well, I, I don't think there are any specific challenge related to operations or working closely with our clientele or, or those uh, residents in our community. I think uh, the biggest challenge that we have is the information flow both 
into our organization so we can make timely decisions. Obviously, each and every day there's a press conference being held in Tallahassee. Our governor is making decisions on a daily basis, and we have to go ahead then after receiving that information. Audrey and I have to start working on making sure our staffs have that information so we can implement it. Even today, there had been discussions about safer from home operations in the southeast counties, not necessarily for our county, so we had to make sure people understood it wasn't what we were looking at. Uh, you know, when the Surgeon General made his advisory, obviously there was a lot of questions regarding that 65 and older age bracket and what they should be doing. Once again, as Audrey pointed out, it's an advisory. It hasn't been a mandate. So it's really more the communication flow, not so much our communication flow externally. Kevin and his staff in our communications department are doing a great job keeping our uh, website updated, getting out information as soon as they can. It's really taking the communication that's coming in and making sure our staff is aware of it so we can start being nimble and flexible as that, that happens. Uh, uh, Mr. Brossart. Yes, just to follow up on uh, Commissioner McLeod's question, I've got about 42, 43 folks working from home between uh, uh, billing and, and payroll accounts payable. Uh, the, the, the resounding comment is speed uh, of the internet and the fact that their internet drops from time to time. I figured that might put a smile on Commissioner Madden's face, but that, <laughs> that's... Okay. Uh, <laughs> that, that's uh, that's that's been the resounding comment so far. And nothing in the way of logistics other than than that. Um, and if I may, people to be and if I may also, Mr. Mayor, sir. Yeah. And obviously, we're, we're having a lot of questions coming in from the community about uh, process, uh, things that are closed, ooh, what can we do? And staff is doing is doing a great job in making sure those those questions are answered but it's even getting down to the point where people are asking, hey, my neighbor has 10 people swimming in the pool, what should I be doing? And uh, obviously we're, we're, we're directing them to the, proper, to the proper folks to talk about that. And so one of the things we'll do today is spend a little time encouraging social distancing as we go along. And, and I, uh, you know, we have great cases where you see that's happening well and some that it is not. Um, are we finding that on the, people that have issues on speed, uh, Mr. Brossart, that they are being able to be corrected uh, in short order? I mean, are we working on solutions for those? The, the, the speed is, is at their home, sir. And uh, the, the response that I got today from my friends at uh, Spectrum was, we've got all the kids back to school, uh, virtually back to school right now, and it's just, it's, it's copper. Got it, oh, okay. So, all right, uh, Commissioner McCarley. Sorry, I had to get off mute. Are they in the city limits, Mr. Brossart, or are they kind of spread out in unincorporated folk as well? Spread out, yes, ma'am. Spread out throughout uh, throughout the community, not just not just in the city limits. In fact, probably more than more than half of them work just outside the city limits. Okay, good to know. Good question. Any other questions? Commissioner Reed. Thank you. Audrey, who is responsible for policing uh, when people come in from the airport and the people come in from like New York, stuff like that, and uh, drive in their automobile? Are they do, uh, supposed to do their own uh, quarantine, per se? Yeah, it was brought up on the state call this morning. Um, basically, we have, they had teams at the airports from uh, Department of uh, Emergency Management, Florida Department, um, and uh, Department of Health uh, teams meeting airlines and airplanes coming in, you know, at the Miami Airport, Tampa Airport, Orlando, um, and um, you know, they were asking them questions, taking their temperatures as they were getting off the planes. Uh, now this morning, they, it was obviously brought up, I'm sure some of you have seen on the news, that, um, you know, FHP, are stopping people as they're driving in and talking to them, asking them questions, taking their temperatures, um, and then obviously requesting that they self-quarantine if they continued on into the state. Um, it's the same as if they come in um, at the airports as well. And, you know, I understand that they are now checking on them to make sure that they are doing their self-quarantining. 
Excellent. Any other questions? Yes, Commissioner Franklin. So, Audrey, I understand from that then that if we have planes flying into Lender that are on flight plans that indicate a origination from New York or one of those places that are of question, we've got someone that will talk to them at the airport? Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. And who's, who's doing that now? Is that um, our own staff? No, if, if uh, they're coming into the airport, it's staff between Florida Department of Emergency Management and Florida Department of Health. Very good. Any other questions? Audrey, thank you for your work in this. And again, a baptism by fire, and we appreciate it very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, that brings, are, are there any other questions at all on this portion for the city manager? Okay, that takes us to our city attorney, uh, item number two for the extension of the declaration. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as I mentioned last uh, week, there is some language in the Florida statutes that suggests that any local state of emergency only has a duration of seven days and must be extended in seven day increments if you so wish to extend it. Um, so we're just asking that uh, you extend the declaration of state emergency that you originally imposed for an additional seven days and just to be pointed out that this is not a stay at home order or shelter in place order. This is the original declaration of state emergency that puts the city in a position to be able to, like, for example, apply for reimbursement uh, from FEMA. It also grants the city manager certain, certain powers to declare curfews in certain areas, declare certain areas uh, of the city off limits, but it is not a comprehensive stay in, in, in place or shelter, and shelter in place or stay at home order. So. Uh, you extend it for seven days, and I would ask that uh, if there's anybody that wants to, in the, in the, from the public that wants to speak to that, that they be allowed that opportunity before you actually approve this. Commissioner Reed. Commissioner Reed, you, uh, you made a motion, yes, by raising your hand, but you were moved. So moved. So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, so Commissioner Walker seconded. Uh, so discussion first with commissioners and then we'll go to the audience. This would continue what is in place currently. Commissioner Walker. My question, Mr. Mayor, would be, uh, Mr. Palmer, uh, are we gonna do this week by week? Uh, as you say, for every seven days or should we take a cumulative uh, number of days at this point? As we know uh, what we're faced with, we'll continue for more than seven days, or do we do it every week as we go along here? Should we should we, should we include maybe a number of days versus a uh, higher number of days versus seven? Yeah, I mean, the, the problem is that the statute that uh, we're looking at says you can only extend it for a seven day increment, so we're limited by seven days. Okay, okay. so we have to revisit okay. this for seven right. days. There is okay. a possibility that you could delegate that, that authority to the city manager, but for now, we're just asking the city commission to do that. Okay, all right, thank you. Since it is likely we'll probably have weekly uh, meetings, I think that probably will be uh, manageable. We would, we could go to the end of April to kind of align with the uh, president's otherwise, but if it's a state statute in seven days, let's. We, there's no reason not to follow that, I don't think. Any other comments from commissioners? All right, um, seeing none, any comments from the audience? Scott, you have to manage this one. Okay, Mayor. Yeah, no, we have no one uh, wishing to make any comments. Okay. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. Unanimously passes. Um, do you have any? Coming up, that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any other? Um, uh, attorney issues that you want to bring before us? Not Sir. at this time. Okay. By hearing none, that would allow us to go to the audience portion of our meeting before we go to um, the, the mayor and members of the city commission. Are there any, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak? And Commissioner Franklin, if you could kind of call them to the podium, that'd be great. I sure will. We, we have one person, no? No one wishing to speak? No one, Mayor. All right, um, that will then move me to uh, some uh, a comment I'd like to make if I could open us in our time together. Uh, yes, Commissioner Delgado. 
No, nope. city manager of Gara. <laughs> Not ready to be elected. Oh, wow. Wow, well, I did elected. do that, didn't I? I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. You aren't going to like the pay. Yeah, you, all, you all have a tough enough job. I'm not sure I'm ready for that yet. Um, just to let you know, Mr. Mayor, there are 130 email comments that we received prior to today's meeting. Kevin has tried to uh, assimilate them in, in, in areas of, 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 of what they want to talk about. I'm not sure if you want to uh, wait until we discuss city park closures to do that, or do you want to do that now? Um, I think it might be nice now before we go into our section, um, and, I, and I'll kick off a little portion of that, uh, to listen to the consolidation of the uh, uh, comments that you got, Kevin, if you could, and, th and that'll serve kind of as our audience portion of this meeting. Yes, sir. Thank you. Kevin Cook, Director of Communications with the City of Lakeland. Thank you. We have exactly 127 emails that came in to the comment at lakelandgov.net prior to this meeting, I, we have them condensed. I want to thank communication staff for reading through these and condensing them the way they have done. And if you want me to go further into it, also I can certainly read them, but we've got them into pretty concise groupings and numbered. So I'll just start there and then you can tell me what, what you want me to do after I just give you an idea. So out of the 127, we have three that say open parks and no stay at home order. We have two emails that have come in asking for rental assistance and wanting to know the various programs outside of what the city and I mean the state and federal programs are, if the city will be assisting anyway with rental assistance. We have two emails that have come in that says close all parks. We have 19 emails that have come in stating open all parks. We have four emails that came in asking who actually decides who is essential versus non-essential. We had one email that was outside of our jurisdiction. That's a county complaint. We had 15 random that are all over the place. Um, and as I stated, there, I've, if you could see, I've got I've got them all in stacks, so if you want me to read any, I certainly can. We have 65 emails that have come in as telling us or asking us to close all city functions and leave it open for only essential businesses. We have one that's stating um, either make a decision, either open all parks or close all parks, but not just willy-nilly. We have one close and what helps what and ask close businesses and then asking what help there is uh, on top of that. And then we have six that are employer complaints complaining on their employers for not practicing safe distancing. And then we have seven that are stating no stay at home. Please don't provide a an executive order telling everyone to stay at home. So that's it in a nutshell. I'll be glad to recap or answer any questions. And if you need some additional clarification, I can certainly read some of these as well. I do not, but I think that is representative of a lot of the emails we have read to some degree. And I know, by the way, uh, fellow commissioners, fabulous job on your handling many of those communications and thank you for your attention to them. And I know we share a lot in what we have um, seen and heard. Uh, I also want to kind of begin with some comments. And the reason I would like to lead in this is because as you know, I have um, uh, been active with respect to at least advocating that we move to closing non-essential businesses and i'd like to kind of I, so i thought it'd be best and most succinct if i just prepare some comments so i'm actually going to read a little bit of what i wrote okay uh, good afternoon uh as it has been reported i do advocate the closure of non-essential businesses immediately but i also believe we should do so on a coordinated countywide basis as we delay becoming appropriately aggressive at both our city and county levels we are increasing the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Ultimately, the rising data will increase our resolve. I hope I am wrong, 
but statistically, it is simply a matter of time. As of this afternoon, with 830 tests taken in Polk County and 40 of them still awaiting results, we have 55 cases, which is a 6% positive rate. With no deaths yet in Polk, 50 deaths in Florida overall, and 2,854 deaths nationally. That's as of right now. I believe the primary resistance to declaring a safer at home or a stay at home ruling is economically based. I've spent my life as a businessman. I have experienced economic risks, losses, and recoveries. I have great empathy for those pressures. However, businesses can be restored, lives cannot. Our county and cities have worked very hard to take the next right steps and prepare for a virus onslaught. I admire our county EOC commitment and the work of our city management team and every department head within the city of Lakeland. Many businesses throughout our city that have moved to work from home models as aggressively as possible as we have done it within our own uh, city hall. The real issue for many is we don't believe the virus is threatening enough yet to become more drastic. Unfortunately, it will likely require more, more Polk citizens to be infected with the coronavirus and resulting deaths before we become so. So I appeal to all leaders across our county to watch the speed of the doubling of the cases that is going to rapidly occur before us. I urge us to recognize that this is not the time to focus on protecting our economy. It is a time to focus on what we can control, which is saving lives. A decision to close non-essential businesses is an opportunity to safeguard the health and lives of others. It considers the fear of many citizens in our county as they go to work daily. Many find their tasks an unnecessary risk to their lives and the lives of those that are in their household. They are pressured in the workplace to return or risk losing their job. They seek relief from deep daily angst and desire to protect their family by staying home. That protection is a decision away. What definition do we include for defining an essential business that does not stay open? Uh, or, or that does stay open, I'm sorry. We have many good templates to choose from, and our city attorney, Palmer Davis, is working to identify the broadest definition possible. Just to provide a suggestion of some of those businesses that could continue to work beyond the more obvious ones, it could include construction, real estate facilitating closings, and carry out food establishments, to name a few that have been questioned. Healthcare workers and first responders are dismayed at the casual response by many of our citizens as they risk exposure to the virus daily by serving the needs of our community. Many people do not observe the six foot rule. Thousands in our county do not. We have not yet experienced enough personal pain to help us recognize why this social isolation is a responsibility, not an optional decision. Let me restate my conviction. I am not discrediting this commission or any other leaders across our counties who are currently not motivated to consider a stay-at-home action. I have great respect for all. We work cooperatively alongside one another. They, I believe you govern with thoughtful, high integrity, holistic and responsible thinking, and I know they all care about people. My appeal is to prepare to respond rapidly as our county numbers begin to snowball. This consideration could even be as soon as the County Commission agenda study this Friday, but most certainly, I would think it will be within the next two weeks. This, the nation has extended its social distancing guidelines to the end of April. Disney has extended its current closing to mid-April. In my opinion, our Polk County schools are unlikely to reopen this semester. Our colleges have reduced their students to the essential minimum on campus with protective plans, to place, uh, plans in place to respond to any kind of a positive test that they may incur. And our hospital has extensive plans in place to attempt to weather this crisis. We have the ability to minimize the transferring of the virus from one person to the other. We have the ability to reduce the number of deaths that will occur in Polk County. But this will only occur when we become, as a body, as a legislative body across Polk County, as drastic as necessary. I say all this as a call for action, while also suggesting we need to think about our citizens who could become increasingly homebound during this time to increase their ability to get some exercise, concerning the social isolation tips that make that also possible. Hence, 
we may wish to consider expanding the number of trails on which our citizens can safely walk observing the six foot rule, such as Lake Parker Trail, Three Parks Trail, and even in the county, the Fort Fraser Trail. I say this while also urging large crowds circling Lake Hollingsworth to stay six feet apart, away from anyone walking near you. Furthermore, we can give consideration to reopening activity areas where citizens can safely participate. Cleveland Heights Golf Course, utilizing some of the safe golf practices that are in place, uh, tennis courts could be restricted to singles play, and boat ramps could be reopened, requesting boaters be limited to social distance any given boat can sustain. These might also be items we want to consider. Two more things and I'm finished. One is that we certainly can use this time as a call to pray for protection. And I am pleased that our faith community is mobilizing in an effort to do that on a citywide basis. And finally, please remember our not-for-profits during this time as they have funding needs, and this is an important time to help them help others. And we play a critical role during a crisis in being able to do that. As a community, let's find ways to stay open where it is safely possible and closed where necessary in order to protect the healthcare and first responders who guard our safety. By doing so, we will protect the lives of those who may never contract the virus, the virus unnecessarily. Thank you for your attention while hearing my considerations. Comments? Any comments? Oh, yes, Commissioner McCarley. Um, I appreciate your thoughtfulness and your intention in this, Mr. Mayor, and I do, you know, would like to, to call on the county. I don't think that Lakeland can be um, supersede the county activity and what their decisions are. And I think we all have to work together. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear you share all of that. I think all of us, it has weighed heavily on the economic uh, side of this as well. Obviously, public health being our number one issue and public safety that we want to protect all of our citizens, not just in Lakeland, but in the surrounding areas as well. Um, so I appreciate all of your comments. I think just for the public at large to know, and I've said this in many emails to people who have been asking, this is a this is a ripple effect that we're going to see happening. The numbers are not reflective. We're nowhere near our peak, I don't think, with regard to diagnoses or, or what's actually happening on the ground. A lot of people may not even be tested at this point. So even though our numbers reflect, you know, no deaths in Polk County right now, I, I'm unfortunately of the belief that, that we're gonna see that go up in the coming weeks and months. Um, so just to echo, yes, I, I agree that maybe um, I had asked Parks and Rec for our later conversation to present a map of our trails that we could possibly open. Um, I concur with that and to be considerate of that. And I just appreciate your comments as a whole. Thank you. Other comments from commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And while I would tend to agree with um, some of your comments, not all, um, as well as what I've heard even Commissioner McCauley mentioned, um, I am still uh, supportive on, uh, in the area of making sure that we can maybe uh, align ourselves in some respect to have uh, our trails open or uh, very similar situation as such. But I think we got to do it um, in, a, in, a, in the vein of making sure all citizens can have the same kind of activity. If we start picking and choosing and not inclusive choosing, right. then we're gonna have a problem. And I get to hear some of these things that some of you all don't get to hear. Yeah, um, any thoughts on so what we're not including? I, I'm just making sure when we, when we have that discussion, not, we have not had it yet, that we, we uh, make sure we understand we want to be as, as inclusive as we can. Sure. <clears throat> An example would be if we talk about opening tennis courts, for example, open those up again, then let's look about having all tennis courts open around the city, the whole spectrum of our city, not just certain tennis courts, right. if you hear what I'm saying. Sure. Um, and that's as an example, of course. But surely I, I'm, I'm not in favor right now of moving toward any safe at home or stay at home directive unless we have an inclusive situation with our county government as well. I agree. I agree. Any other comments? Uh, Commissioner McLeod. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, as I know, we have all 
responded to constituents and friends and people who've reached out to us, this is, is a tough issue because we are trying to balance um, a public health crisis across the nation. And while there are few cases, fewer cases in Polk County than we see in other areas, we're trying to make sure we get ahead of it, stay ahead of it as much as possible, while at the same time balancing personal freedoms and keeping residents safe. And, and there's such a mix that goes into that. I think the emails that we heard, uh, the comments that Kevin read are reflective of that and, and the passions behind those. And so we're, we are trying to make very tough decisions in a, with a lot of uncertainty. And so that makes this process uh, difficult at times. I, at this point, uh, would not be willing to pull the lever of a stay-at-home order, or safer-at-home order. However, as, as I have told people, that that option remains on the table. And I think um, I would love to see, I've had a number of people reach out to me, I'm sure you all as well, to say, here's what my business is doing. We are uh, trying to be as aggressive as possible with social distancing practices and our organizations in the community, community are doing that and we want the chance to be able to continue that. Um, and I think we are seeing that. Um, and, and so I applaud those organizations and groups that are trying to be aggressive in that. And I think from our standpoint, we continue to urge that, use our voice and really uh, emphasize social distancing, uh, improving those practices. I think that's what Dr. Jackson talked about on the, the call today uh, from the health department is we have to uh, continue to improve those social distancing practices, which is hard for many of us. And, and you think of where we were just a month ago and now how things have shifted in our culture. I do think it's becoming more uh, accepted, more common in our community. Uh, but I do agree about you. Know, we've got to find a way to to limit crowds. You, know, you look at like Hollingsworth. You mentioned the trail and and people. Uh, so many people uh, out there in the evenings, and and that is a concern. Uh, and so um, I know we'll get to the parks uh, in a second. I, I do think it makes some sense to look at um, the golf course, the tennis courts, the the uh, areas where residents can go and still practice social distancing, and where we can manage that as a community as well. And so um, I'm, I look forward to talking about that, but that's just where I am at the moment. I do agree that this would have to be a, I really think for it to, to make sense, if we were to issue some type of order that's more restrictive, it would have to be a regional approach countywide. I don't think it for, for Lakeland to do it and, and then not the others, there's a lot of, I think that presents a lot of issues and especially for families and colleagues who may live in this, somebody lives in the city, somebody doesn't, uh, for businesses as well. Um, so that's where I am at the moment. Very good. Other comments? Commissioner Franklin. Thank you, Mayor. And I really appreciate it. I want to echo the comments others have made about the thoughtfulness of your um, ideas and thoughts. And I know there's a lot of time and energy and prayer that's gone into that. Um, I did want to pick up a little bit on the numbers that Kevin had read us about the emails and just want to share that, that I don't know about other commissioners, but I have had easily two to three dozen business owners either reach out by direct email to my personal or calls. And I think everyone recognizes the, the uncharted waters we're in. There's a lot of sensitivity to the health concerns that are very real. I don't think there's anyone diminishing that. Uh, we all know that it's a serious threat and we all know it's gonna get worse before it gets better. I think, um, and, and the reason they did that versus the public channels is they know that it's freedom of information and all those are gonna be out. And a lot of business owners don't wanna have their names out there uh, expressing some of the concerns that they're sharing privately. But you know, I, I know you mentioned that this is not the time to focus on uh, protecting the economy, but I, I personally disagree with that. I think we have to focus on both. We don't know the, the extent and the ramification of the health threat. It's gonna be bad. But we also know we're, all, we're in uncharted waters as far as the economic damage that we're doing. I mean, the, the unemployment numbers alone that we saw last week, four times more than have ever been recorded in a week, this week's gonna be even worse. Uh, the medium and long-term impacts are going to be staggering on the economy. And this is not just about people making a buck and profitability. This is people staying alive, literally staying alive. And um, you, know, you go back through our history and look at times of, of hard economic downturn and the depression, there, there are real health impacts that come from millions of people being out of work. And to the extent that we can stay in step with the county and the state for now, I, I personally think we need to. And really every day matters. We may very well come to this point where we have to do this shutdown. And when we get there, I think we'll all understand the scope and we'll, we'll embrace it. Uh, but I've had a lot of business owners telling me now, every day I can keep my doors open it increases my chances of survival. 
And um, I do, my personal experience from an, in our own business and in others that I've seen, people do take this seriously. And they, they understand that if we mess this up and don't exercise good protocols, we will be shut down. And uh, I've just echo my others, uh, the other colleagues comments about this not being the time yet. And, uh, and we'll talk about the parts too when we get there. Yeah, and if anything, if I'm just a little bit of a spearhead towards readiness, that's okay with me. I, you know, I, I really would uh, echo your comments in terms of uh, the support for us making every day possible for businesses. And, the, and we're talking about the non-essential businesses and their ability to, to, to work through this. Uh, so I don't want to be dismissive in that. I just want to be protective over the right thing at the right moments for us. So I, I'm, we're in sync. And to those employ to those employers, I have responded that you know I want us to wait to be in sync with the county because I think it's too difficult otherwise. Other comments? I just guess. from just from a procedural standpoint, uh, we noticed this meeting to receive emails during the meeting as well. I mean, this is very procedurally kind of difficult to do, but from a sunshine standpoint, attempting to have a virtual meeting like this. Uh, we we did make that opportunity available to the public to email during the meetings. So I don't know if Kevin is. Uh, I see his picture's not on the screen, but uh, I don't know if we're receiving any emails during this portion of the meeting that need to be read in. That was the 137 emails that I mentioned. They had been coming in um, since we we published the the uh, email address, and we've received eight, nine more since the, the last uh, overview of those emails. They all seem to still fall in those same categories that I mentioned regarding rental assistance, parks, who decides essential, non-essential, um, open or close all parks, make one idea or, or the other, uh, close and help, close businesses, and then what kind of help are you going to give when you do close the businesses? And, you know, I read the categories. I certainly don't need to do them over again unless you would like. But since the since we started the meeting, like I said, we've had nine more come in. Commissioner McCarley. I'm reading. I was just X. Sorry, I was Xing out a slow connection window. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, yes, Commissioner Walker. I'd just like to, uh, I guess, share. You know, I think, as I heard, I think Commissioner Franklin mentioned, many of our businesses are, I think, very serious uh, about what is going on and how best they can be supportive to help end this pandemic situation. Uh, and I, I was very much, I guess, taken, not so much taken by surprise, but just pleased to see even, and as I walked through and, and came uh, and drove up maybe even to a couple of businesses in, uh, the northern part of our city um, along the Florida Avenue 98 corridor and just witnessed how, you know, the signs and indications on their doors, you know, sharing with those, and this pretty much were, you know, uh, gas stations, 7-Eleven, um, Circle K kind of thing, and the core in the city right there. And just saw how many of the, uh, I was uh, making sure that things was done and things are in place to safeguard. You know, they even had you in line if you were coming inside to make a purchase of food or whatever you are paying for your gas if you don't doing it at the pump. Um, you, they have they had lines already divided to make six feet away to make sure you stay behind the line. You know, they even had their own little uh, wall of protection. They had from the ceiling down, got a little screen or whatever you call it, that, you know, try to help out with the situation. So I, I, I would think, you know, many of our businesses are, are doing that. They're trying to make sure that uh, they can safeguard and stay within the guidelines of the things that we know have been recommended for us to do to help support this uh, situation that we have at hand. I think you're right. They're put, people are being very, very creative. Um, city manager Delgado was telling about a computer store that he had witnessed um, on a TV segment where they actually – you know, had you drop it off on the outside, you left, they came out and picked it up on the inside. And and um, there's lots of ways to, to manage in between. And so I don't, I, I'm, I'm thrilled with everyone's creativity and the ability to maximize through the difficulties of this. 
I just want us to be aware of the numbers and make sure as we see them rise that we become as drastic as necessary. And again, in alignment with the county, in alignment with the other cities in within our county. And uh, because I do believe it would be difficult for us to do that as a city as well. Um, yes, Commissioner McLeod. Well, I'm glad you mentioned keeping an eye on the uh, doubling, you know, the rate of cases as they as they double in our county and the importance of that, and also making sure that we are um, cognizant of the front lines of the healthcare workers who, if, if we do see a surge in cases, who are putting their lives at risk to care for others, and that we are very, I know, Mr. Mayor, you've been um, aware of that and have mentioned that to people, and so I think that's, uh, we don't want to lose sight of that for sure as we, as we talk about that, that we're mindful of uh, the risk that uh, our first responders and then our, our healthcare providers are, are potentially facing as well. Yeah, I think casualness is the most egregious witnessing that any of our healthcare providers and first responders see. So that's another reason, another call to responsibility for everybody who's out in public spaces uh, exercising to just do their parts, keeping the distance. Um, any other additional comments? All right, then why don't we move to any recommendations you might want to make um, with respect to uh, parks? Anybody have uh, opening thoughts on that? Yes, Commissioner Madden. Commissioner Madden, you're muted. And then Commissioner Reed will follow Commissioner Madden. Yes. So we'll go uh, Commissioner Madden, Commissioner Reed, and then uh, Commissioner Franklin. Can you hear uh, me? So, yeah, now I can. Okay. Okay, after um, hearing that everyone is committed to following the president's lead to follow social distancing for the next month, and in consultation with residents, who feel that Lake Hollingsworth, Lake Mirror, and downtown are getting too congested due to our last closure of all parks last week. And in consultation with Bob Donahue, the director of Parks and Rec, I would like to move to reopen recreational amenities that allow for social distancing, such as dog parks, tennis courts, pickleball courts, boat ramps, the golf course, and that specifically opens up those employees to open and close the gates for Three Parks Trail in the morning and evening, and then also the trails in Dobbins, Common Ground, Cook Park, and Lake Parker. And what about the um, uh, centers in, in any of the shelter areas? Any comments on that? No, uh, nothing that would have to be sanitized, no picnic benches, no water fountains, no restrooms would be open. Only fresh air opportunities to exercise safely with six feet of social distancing. Is there a second to that motion? Uh, second. Commissioner Walker, a second. A second. All right. Discussion. And then I think, Commissioner Reed, why don't you start first? Because I've Reed, Franklin, and then Walker. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Can y'all hear me okay? Sir. I, I can't hear myself talking to earphones, but I'm, I'm anyway. Uh, there again, I think Stephanie's made a very uh, profound statement. And of course, I know a lot of people have wanted to use the parks. And as long as we use the golf, let's address the golf course first, from my standpoint. The component of them, one per cart, and they're cleansing they're doing, I think that's an excellent idea. I know the trails are imperative that we use to, to give our citizens some uh, exercise and that type of stuff. So I'm really uh, glad that Stephanie made that proposal. And, I, and again, I'm going to support it. Uh, there again, if, if people try to isolate themselves socially, there again, personally, I'm not out as much as I used to be, obviously. Uh, there again, of course, I do limit myself to the basically family members of people that I've trust that don't have the uh, symptoms at this point and then the minimum go to the grocery store and stuff like that that just necessities in life uh, but uh, I would hope that they would limit themselves 
socially as well as uh, from the standpoint of distancing. But um, they're going to ask support uh, Stephanie's motion 100%. Commissioner Franklin, thank you, sir. I would agree, Mayor. And I think um, even though I understand the sentiment behind our decision last week, I I thought there might be a kind of a, a ripple effect that we that was unanticipated. And I think we've seen that, especially with Lake Hollingsworth. Uh, you know, without meaning to, we've now forced everybody into the same common spaces. And I think if we can open this up, relax it, but use good common sense, I think I think it would be a move in the right direction. And I did have a question for Tony. Uh, Police-wise, I've seen some of the uh, news reports in some cities where they're showing patrols that will drive streets and come out over the microphone and talk to people that they're seeing, you know, um, not doing things as they should in groups that are too large. I know that's going to be tough to tough to police, but I think if people saw our, our police out there making those kinds of recommendations, I think it'd be helpful. I just wanted your feedback on that. No, I think we can. I, I've talked to uh, Chief Garcia, who's in, in the room today. We have been doing patrols, but primarily in the areas that have been closed. So we haven't been patrolling Lake Hollingsworth or we haven't been patrolling those areas that are currently open. I think, though, we're, with the uh, impact that we're seeing uh, on Lake Hollingsworth, on Lake Mirror, on Lake Morton, uh, we'll be more than happy to go ahead and at least patrol and make sure people are trying their best. But as we, if the commission decides to open up the new trails, we'll do the same there. Uh, but we have been patrolling. It, obviously, we can't be out there 24 seven, but we've sure. been patrolling. We've gotten a lot of uh, emails and correspondence from communities and subdivisions that are concerned about what you just talked about, that people gathering. Uh, you know, uh, at their homes or in, in the clubhouses and those type of things. Uh, uh, LPD has been patrolling out there and at least talking to the people. We haven't pulled out the megaphones. We haven't done that type of thing, but they have been talking to people and, and, and trying to suggest to them while it's not a mandate, it's something that's being presented not only from the local level, but also the county and the state and the federal level too. So we'll continue to do that. Uh, then Commissioner Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm in favor um, of what Commissioner Madden's motion is, but she named all the ones that I think I was just had some concern about or asking to be considered except one, and that is Simpson Park. And the reason why, Bella Vista Trail is part of Simpson Park. People use it to walk. It also has tennis courts. So if I would ask that her giving a motion, making a motion, we consider adding some support to that particular motion. So you still would have an area of our city, this inner city, where people still can walk as they are around the Bella Vista part of Bella Vista Trail, the Bella Vista Trail that goes from MLK up to 98, you know, of course it crosses 98, but then most people walk down south from the fire station there to Bardis back around to the park on MLK again, and it, where you find the courts right there on, on that uh, bus, Marty Street, uh, between, of course, Florida and MLK. I would ask that you would consider that, Commissioner Madden. Commissioner Madden, would you like to come in on that? I would absolutely second that amendment. Um, and Commissioner Madden, on the courts, and for opening courts, in this amendment uh, uh, that's to be used for tennis. And are you talking about singles or did you make mention of that versus doubles? I didn't mention that, but I'm, I'm open to your suggestions. It's a great, I mean, you share the same tennis ball, there's no question, but it's a great way to make sure that you don't have the in, unintentional droplets by people passing, especially if I missed the shot and you'd cover for me, you know, that kind of problem which would be typical, and city manager Delgado. Um, I, I obviously appreciate uh, Commissioner Walker's request and uh, understand that uh, we want to go ahead and make sure that trails are primarily open. All I would ask is that you would allow our parks and recreation staff and our administrative staff to make sure that whatever we open, it's consistent with what the uh, essence of what the request was, and that's primarily to open trails and tennis courts. As you know, we have a lot of basketball courts within our 
our, our city. And those are being heavily used at this point. We've had to go ahead and take the nets down, but that's still the, if you, I remember when I was a kid, you didn't need a net to play basketball. And so uh, I, I would ask that whatever you decide, you allow our parks and rec staff to manage that, to make sure that areas such as playgrounds and bathrooms and water fountains and those type of things are not open to the public and are at least cordoned off. And we primarily concentrate on trails and tennis courts, it sounds like, and those type of things. That, that would be my only request. Uh, Commissioner Reed and then Commissioner Walker. Thank you, uh, Diggin. Tony addressed the exact issue I was referring, going to refer to that was a basketball. I know it's uh, difficult to play basketball and be six feet away. Uh, but there again, I think uh, Tony didn't, I want you to begin mention the golf course. I, I, I think that's imperative as well. Uh, the golf course, uh, if, you, if you don't mind, uh, you know, we've taken a look at certain protocols that would uh, assist in trying to maintain that social distancing. Those include one person per car. Those include not touching a flag stick. So flag sticks would have to remain in, in, the, in the, the, the holes and not be touched, as well as continued dis, uh, disinfecting and, cl and cleaning all of the golf carts as they come in, and a number of other protocols that, that Brock Whitmire and his staff are prepared to go ahead and do, which also may include um, staggering tea times so that people aren't out every six minutes or every eight minutes. They might have to go out every 16 minutes. It will slow down the game. It obviously will mean not so many people will be on the course, but it will add to social distancing. So we have some options to do that if, if the commission uh, moves in that direction. Thanks, Reed. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate that. And uh, one person per cart, we may get a little more revenue if they keep the price up on the golf cart. And uh, get, <laughs> it might be a benefit down the road. Uh, but uh, yeah, just, that's great. Commissioner McCarley. Um, I just, I am happy to have the trails open so that there's walkability for people throughout Lakeland. I'm still quite hesitant on the courts and places where more than one person, you know, I know more than one person walks. Typically, sometimes if you have a family, you see all four walking or a couple kids on bikes or something like that. But I am a proponent of the trails. I really don't feel comfortable with um, opening the other parts of the park, so I won't support the, the motion as it stands, but I just sort of wanted to give you my background on why I won't. I think that being conservative is really important. I don't want to look back in a few weeks when, when we see exacerbated numbers, and I'm not trying to be you know chicken little that the sky is falling, but I don't know that we have a clear view of what the impact currently is. And so for me, I'm hesitant to, to encourage more uh, recreational activities, walking and biking, I get um, the other recreational activities I'd like to limit. So in particularly, are you, are you talking about basketball or are you talking about, which I think you are limiting, correct? And to anticipating continuing to limit city manager. Yes. Basketball. That, sorry, I had to turn my mic back on that. That is the, the plan. And, or tennis courts. Or, or what are you talking about, Commissioner McCarley, specifically? I, I'm talking just about other ways that people can, can gather. I agree with Commissioner Franklin that we had an unintended consequence by closing those trails and, and seeing the higher volume on the other three lakes. And, you know, having people do the lake-to-lake -lake trail, I think, is, is okay, um, you know, where they can bike lake-to-lake -lake or walk lake-to-lake -lake and use those safe paths. I think the path around the three parks path or three trails path around Cleveland Heights is a great place for exercise and walking and bike riding. Um, I'm just hesitant that it's a slippery slope when we do open basketball and even tennis courts um, where you're going to start seeing more groups of people gather. And this is an individual responsibility. I'm not trying to legislate common sense with this. I don't think that's our role in the government. I think people should be individually responsible. And if they are being individually responsible uh, in gathering less than 10 people and, you know, just being with immediate family, I think that's great. But to stop the spread, we have to be cognizant that even droplets, even if someone coughs and you're walking behind them on Lake Collingsworth, the potential is there to become ill. And I think you can also be asymptomatic does not mean you're not pre-symptomatic. So just because you don't have a fever or the CDC you know, um, guidelines at the moment doesn't mean you're not infected. 
So I think we're just dealing with something that is much greater than what uh, we've ever dealt with before, which I, we all agree on that. But for me, just going to the parks and rec issue, I'm, I'm good with the trails aspect. I'm, I'm not good with the actual activity areas. Okay, Commissioner Walker. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Cause I thought when I made it very clear when I asked for the motion to be reconsidered by Commissioner Madden, I didn't mention basketball. That did not come out of my mouth at all. I said tennis courts. Yes, sir. There are tennis courts at Simpson Park for those who may not know that. Yes. There are tennis courts there. Yes, there are basketball courts there too. But I didn't mention basketball courts. I said tennis courts. Yes, sir. And I said the walking trail. So I don't know how the basketball came up in the subject because I didn't mention it. You, you didn't. Uh, our city manager mentioned it as part of the things that they're guarding against. And I think in all of this, I hear a tone of, allowing the, um, if we move forward on this, allowing Parks and Recs to have an opportunity to get it vetted and fine-tuned and maybe instituted as quickly as possible, not necessarily on a day certain, but you know, it might be a, some might be able to go soon and some might take two or three days to prepare. Any comment on that, City Manager Delgado? Um, I was going to ask uh, for that, uh, or at least the opportunity to establish a date certain um, not necessarily tomorrow, but let's say April 2nd, we should be prepared to go ahead and move forward by Thursday. So that might be part of the consideration too. All right, um, any other comments? Commissioner Reed? Uh, would we include boat ramps as well? Commissioner Madden? Yes, boat ramps was in my motion. Commissioner Franklin? That was my question as well. and. To Commissioner McCarley's point, I, I understand uh, where you're coming from, but I think what we're looking to do in reversal from where we had gone as a body last week is to try to disperse people across recreational activities. And to me, to the extent that we can put people either individual or, or in pairs, even if it's a foursome playing in four separate carts, that's still going to accomplish the same objective of, of dispersing people. And, and we're not going to overcrowd our walking trails as much if we give people alternatives for exercise. So I would be in, in support of both golf and tennis, not basketball, because it can't be played without contact. But um, I would support opening up all those others. All right, Commissioner McLeod. Tony, just a question for you um, with this motion. Are there any areas that concern you from a management standpoint or gray areas where it, it may be difficult to determine? Does this fall into something we can manage and enforce. I think that's where I'm coming from is just wanting to make sure that these activities um, can comply with social distancing. And when I um, supported the motion last week uh, to close uh, parks and, and other facilities, we were halfway through 15 days to slow the spread. Now the president has extended that to the end of April, um, but I didn't necessarily envision keeping things closed if they can remain open and uh, adhere to social distancing practices. But I just wonder from your vantage point, is there anything in this that concerns you or uh, you would see as a potential gray area? Well, I, I think as I, I mentioned earlier, Commissioner, we would wanna make sure that facilities stay closed, playground areas stay closed because uh, the inability to continue to clean those. Uh, athletic fields where you're gonna see a number of people congregate, not just basketball, but ballparks and soccer fields and those type of things. If they're, you know, if it's one or two people playing soccer in a parking lot, that's one thing, but you know, a soccer field being open, it's very difficult to control that. We don't have the staff available to monitor those type of things. That's why I asked if we can, if we can implement this, say Thursday morning, it gives staff a couple of days to go ahead and start outlining what they can keep open how it can maintain, how it can be maintained, especially the trail areas, because some of the trails abut some of these facilities, and we got to make sure we can keep those facilities closed. As you get into Peterson Park, obviously the ball fields are right there, and so we want to make sure we can accordion those off, have them closed. That would be my only real concern. You know, as it relates to Cleveland Heights Golf Course, we are one of three golf courses that are currently closed in Polk County today. Uh, Shalimar, that retirement community golf course, as well as First Tee. But every other golf course is open. We've taken some of their best practices, and we would be able to implement those. Uh, but we'd have to stay on it, so staff would have to be there to make sure that people adhere to that. Uh, as we take a look at tennis courts, 
Um, I would have to defer to Bob Donahue and his staff, but we're going to have to manage that too. You know, you look at some tennis courts, and while there might be two people playing, there's six or eight people standing around watching them. We're, we're going to have to kind of manage that too. Those are the type of things that we're going to have to have a plan and not necessarily just make it a free-for-all type. Any other comments or questions? I would okay. just uh, Commissioner McCarley. Um, really quick, just from uh, implementation to piggyback on what Commissioner McLeod was just asking, uh, how about sa the safety of our staff? Like when we're talking about protocols, when you do, if, if you we reopen Cleveland Heights Golf, for instance, how are we protecting our staff members? How are mm -hmm. they keeping social distance with uh, patrons? How will all that play out? I, I, Bob Donahue and, and Brock have been taking a look at that, and obviously our starters would not be anywhere near them. They would, they, you know, that they, they would be well outside that six foot range in order to get people started. That's why I'm saying specific tee times that might be staggered in order to help our starters. You know, the Rangers being in a single cart out there, making sure people are adhering to some, certain levels of social distancing would be important. Um, the folks checking in, we would more than likely have to have people stand back. Uh, we might not even be able to take cash. I mean, that might be something that we, we would say it's credit card only, you know, uh, so that we're not handling cash directly. We could have the credit card machines a little bit further, further away. Um, but Bob and Brock have been taking a look at this. And so prior to opening, I would make sure that you all uh, understood what those protocols are. That's why we need a few days. We can't do this tomorrow. Got it. Uh, uh, City Attorney Palmer, I think you had something. Just uh, pointing out again that we need to open this up for audience comment, uh, both if anybody that's physically present as well as emails that might have been received. Sir, regarding this sir, of discussion. Thank you, sir. Any other comments by commissioners? All right, any comments by the audience? And Scott, you can work Anyone in the audience for a comment? Actually, I do. We do have one coming down, Mayor. Thank you. Jeff Hollis. Please state his name. Right here. Thank you. Right. to a mic. No. Can, can, can you not hear now? We can hear. Let's use your mic and have him yeah. just get six feet away. All right. Yeah. Very good. Hello. Okay, if you could begin again, sir, that would be great. Thank you. Hi, my name is Russ Callis, and I'm not planning on speaking on this subject, but I think with my background, I have some to offer. Uh, I'm a big fan of the golf course at Cleveland Heights and love the history of it. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think you're grasping what it takes to operate this. I'm not a big fan of how the golf course has been operated. And I think you're looking at an operation that historically is now losing money, but you're wanting to operate it in at this time of crisis. You have a mandate in front of you that's till the end of April. I find it baffling that we're going to remove tables from Munn Park and then expose patrons to a golf cart, or that we're going to close our city lobbies from access to our public. But yeah, we're going to open up our other facilities for that purpose. I would say as a swimmer and a collegiate swimmer, why not open the pools? Because I'm only one, get one in the, the lane, maybe there's two. Certainly that's social distancing. I think from an economic standpoint and from a city standpoint, you have an opportunity to make a hard decision that may not be popular, by maintaining the closure of these types of accessible facilities. Is it popular? No. Is it the right thing to do? I think it is. We do have other opportunities. My greatest concern is for our first responders and our health workers that are going to have to deal with the ramifications of that. I might add as a, a person that's having to work at his business to maintain income during this. Uh, we're making life and death choices on going to work. 
without that, dealing with the public or not. We've already had businesses closed or affected by it. Let's not complicate issues that we don't have to. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ballas. Any other comments from any audience members? And um, Commissioner, uh, I'm City Manager Delgado, boy, that'd be twice in the same meeting. Um, could you comment on some of the protocols with respect to the golf that they're talking about for safety um, and, the, and also the, at the use of the Cleveland Heights facility? Well, obviously the Cleveland Heights facility would be closed. So the actual operation of the, the, the uh, seating areas, those type of things would not be available to anyone. As far as some of the things that have been done, obviously separation of golf carts, one individual in each cart, Cleveland Heights, even before the golf courses were closed down, they were disinfecting and cleaning the carts after each use. Uh, you know, holes that would be placed upside down so you don't have to bend down to stick your hand in the hole. That's an option. Uh, no touching of flag sticks, um, no rakes in the traps, so no one can physically go and grab something that somebody else would have to grab. Uh, trying not to have people gather even prior to, the, prior to hitting the course or getting on the course, trying not to have people gather. Um, and obviously cleaning, 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 and, and more cleaning. Uh, there's a number of things that have been done at other golf courses that we would evaluate too in order to try to find those best practices. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Franklin and then Ms. Commissioner McCarley. Quick question, Tony, and this may be more for Bob, but are we allowing walkers at any time now? Are there certain times restricted to card only? Because I would think, for me personally, this is less about making money than it is offering a good recreational activity. And if we have people who like to walk, I would hope we wouldn't discourage them at any time. No, as you know, currently today, we allow work walkers in the afternoon. I would suspect if we opened up the golf course, uh, we would maintain those same schedules and let walkers get out in the afternoon. Or we can modify that if the commission felt and, and as Bob and Brock took a look at it. You're right. It's not about making money. This is right. far from making money. If, if we're going to stagger tee times, put one person in a cart, you know, you are really, you are impacting those revenues. And so this has nothing to do about making money. And, and I don't think any golf course within Polk County is, is doing this to make money. I think they're trying to find ways to allow the public to have some outdoor recreation opportunities without having close social gathering. Well, with, with respect then to golf, then I would I would suggest we encourage walking as much as possible, not restricted to the afternoon. And, and my preference would be if you can walk, not everyone can do. A lot of people are going to need to ride. But yeah. if you can walk, I'd encourage them to, to walk. It's fewer carts to have to disinfect. And um, I think it's even better social distancing. We can certainly do that if that's the commission's uh, request. Commissioner McCarley. Just a thought. Um, this is sounds like it's going to take a lot of resources when you say we're going to disinfect and clean and clean and clean. I don't know if they would be better used elsewhere um, to do that. I, you know, along with Commissioner Franklin, if you could encourage people to walk, I think that would, you know, be helpful. But it, just realize that when we when we consider reopening this, that's more resources that might be able to be used elsewhere in the community that we're going to now assign to the golf course. So. I mean, it's again, I'm probably not going to support this, but just more food for thought and, you know, staff resources, actual dis disinfectant resources. If we get three more weeks into this again, I know I'm being chicken little, but, you know, are we going to be able to access that kind of material and those type of um, staff or other things around the community if it becomes needed? It's a good point, Commissioner. Excellent comment. Any other comments by uh, the audience? None. Any uh, closing comments by commissioners? Commissioner Walker. I would just uh, share, as I think we've, we we discussed, even when we uh, did what we uh, voted to do last week this time for our parks and gave it a week. Certainly, we we this will tell us or share with us the outcomes. However, this vote will go. Uh, if it be a positive vote, we will know. You know a week from now, two weeks from now, as you just mentioned, uh, uh, Commissioner McCauley, uh, three weeks from now, you know, what the numbers would be in respect of what, you know, uh, what has or has not happened to support 
the situation that we're all undertaking right now. So I'm, I'm going to vote in favor of it uh, because I think it will allow, and and as, especially so in some of the, the district area where I represent, you know, people to be able to get out a little more and be able to do some things and, uh, across the city as well. Thank you. I think too, um, Commissioner Walker, when we do, if this does pass, it's all the more a call for people while they're doing these activities to make sure they're keeping their distance. We have got to see that cooperational response because that's how we share together in trust in this. Sure. All right. Um, do you want this to be a roll call or a uh, voice vote, sir? Uh, there, there is an amendment to the motion that needs to be taken up first uh, to add to the list of facilities to be opened under the conditions. Uh, the tennis courts and the uh, walking trails at Simpson Park. I'm not sure if I'm missing any, uh, Commissioner Walker. That was it, I think. This is just the trail that's around you know, but Simpson Park and the tennis court there as well. So that amendment needs to be taken up first and then the original motion with the amendment. Roll call. And roll call, roll call is probably the best way to go, given the circumstances. Okay, we'll begin with Commissioner Franklin. Aye. Uh, Commissioner McLeod. Aye. Commissioner um, Madden. Aye. Commissioner Walker. Aye. McCarley. Nay. And Commissioner Reed. Yes. Okay, so that amendment has now been added. Well, we did not mention when we talked about opening the boat ramps, and I'm going to add a, a, a question here because we've had I, we had some complaints from citizens who live on lakes that had five or six people in that w that were private lakes that five or six people in boats over the weekend, um, and I, I think if we're talking about boat ramps, can you give us some guidance, Bill, about what would look appropriate in this kind of environment? Commissioner Reed. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, again, I, again, I live on Lake Parker, and of course, again, I've seen several boats out uh, over the weekend and actually yesterday, and I've, there's only one or two people in the boats that I see. Now, there are pontoon boats, but and of course, they're quite large. Of course, uh, it's hard to restrict those type of things, but again, boat ramps are imperative. For, and usually, ones that I see is only one or two people fishing in the boats and so there's obviously with six feet apart or, or greater and they're and, and they're just kind of and that would be what we want to encourage correct absolutely yes commissioner franklin yes mayor i um had an opportunity to boat over this past weekend and the governor has issued some guidelines on boating and the fish and wildlife commission was out enforcing these and they will allow as many as 10 people on a boat which personally i think is kind of kind of crowded but they also, what I saw to be very, very effective is enforcing a 50 foot rule between boats. So you, you can't get any situation where people are rafting up boats together or anything like that. And Fish and Wildlife and the local uh, Marine police were out enforcing that very strictly over the course of the weekend. Very good, so that's a good comment. Commissioner uh, Reed. There again, I think people that, that boat or fish are pretty good friends. It's not something you do with just anybody. And they're gonna, I think, because it's usually family and friends. And so uh, it's gonna be in your immediate group anyway. And I think if if you feel fairly safe and trust that they're not gonna be contaminated and or, or get you contaminated as well. All right. Any other comments by commissioners? All right. This um vote this next vote will be to lessen the restrictions as we have discussed uh, uh and we'll again we'll do a roll call vote and i'll start with commissioner reed yes mccarley commissioner mccarley no commissioner walker yes commissioner madden yes commissioner um mcleod aye commissioner uh, franklin and i am a, and that was an i and i am a yes as well all right. Um, any other discussion? Oh, yes, we need to do your commissioner comments. Oh, and, well. and Mr. Uh, uh, City Manager Delgado. <laughs> I don't have my campaign signs out yet, so we're good. Yeah, I just want to make sure that uh, April 2nd would be the start date. Are, are the commission good for so that we can put protocols in place and I can send you information on how we're going to handle Cleveland Heights? Anybody have an objection to that? 
you are good to go, sir. April 2nd. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, who would like to begin comments from commissioners? Commissioner Walker. Yes, sir. Um, quick question, if I could, to, uh, Mr. Mayor, my colleagues. I know we're uh, doing in this uh, as, as we're doing virtual meeting here. Um, the committee that's going to make the report to you on, on April 6th for our um, agenda study, and this is directed, I guess, primarily to you, Mr. Mayor, and, and, and um, Mr. Delgado, as, it, as the agenda is planned for our next commission meeting on April 6th. Um, we meet on April 3rd. I think it is Friday for Thursday, is that right? Yeah, Friday for 3rd. Um, we're going to be able to do this the same kind of way. Is that correct? Virtual? Yes. Or we'll continue. So, I, my, I would expect us to do this all through April, with, at the okay. very least. So that means that so every yeah. meeting, everybody that needs access should contact Kevin um, Cook okay. to be able to get their access. Privileges. All right, I'll make sure, I'll make sure that, 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 that that's what that's the question I had, making sure that uh, our presenter for the LACC presentation is done uh, this way and be ready to be prepared to uh, share through, through Zoom. Is, is, is that correct? All yes, right. sir. Well, let's go to uh, meeting. Go to meeting. Okay. okay. All right. Well, I need to be in contact with Kevin and Kevin get all set right. up. Sure. He'll get them on the right path. Right. On uh, March, uh, March 27th, there was a uh, conference call held by uh, Senator Marco Rubio. And I don't know if you all were on that call. Uh, how many was, was hundreds across the state, of course, on that call. 10,000 uh, on that call since then. Yeah, he was really, they had, well, they had to ask people to get off the call, really, unless you were an elected official uh, or had been uh uh, asked to be a part of the call. But a couple of things I, I want to make sure that uh, 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 the public that's listening, especially our small businesses, are uh, aware that came out of that meeting, and that was in, in, in regards to the $2 trillion, the $2 trillion stimulus package bill that has been now signed by our president. You know, there's a portion of uh, that particular bill for small business uh, plan funds. And I think it's referred to as the Paycheck Protection Program, small businesses. Under 250, I mean, under 500 uh, employees can make application for, and of course, it's for cash infusion for to help take care of payroll, lease, uh, subject matters as, as such. And it was also mentioned, as, as I notated uh, in that particular conference call, that there's about $8 billion plus that will be for, Florida, for local governments here in Florida to be able to capitalize on, plus additional funds. For you know, uh, healthcare facilities, and also uh, additional uh, monies for universities and colleges, and all of course it has to do with the COVID nineteen uh, expenses that are being uh, been taken care of by our local government and other healthcare facilities and universities and colleges. It was a very, I think, informative meeting, and he was very concerned, uh, Senator Rubio, about small businesses and how. He could be a support, and how, uh, uh, of course, Florida received uh, the funding that it should have uh, for uh, our small businesses that's under 500 employees. That's all I. Oh, uh, uh, lastly, I don't know whether not you are aware, but Lynn Simpkins lost her sister here latter part of the week. Um, and uh, so those of know Lynn and how dear she is to many of us, especially the neighborhood being our neighborhood liaison for all our different neighborhood associations and groups throughout the city of Lakeland. Uh, you might want to talk to her. It just happened, I think, not a part of the week this past week and uh, the loss of her sister. And it's not the sister that you normally see her with here around the uh, Great Lakeland area, but it's the sister who lived out of town. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much for that um, input. Appreciate it very much. Uh, other commissioner comments? Just green up your mic. I see none. Other Commissioner Franklin, do you have anything? No. Just, just very quickly, Mayor. Um, I do appreciate. I know we all appreciate the input we've been receiving from everyone out there. I, I assure all that we take all sides of this issue very seriously. I would just want to continue to urge those, particularly those in the protected or the, the higher at-risk classes, to please maintain your distance. And if that means self-quarantining. 
then all the better. I know my parents are doing that and I'm visiting from a distance and I'm not allowed to go in the house or any of those kinds of things. So I'd just like to see us continue to exercise good judgment out there. I think that's excellent. And we need to continue um, to recognize that that's how we do the best job of uh, keeping anybody vulnerable. Yes, Commissioner McCarley. I just want to echo that. And also, um, if we could strongly encourage the CDC guidelines, we know that safe distances stop the spread of this. And so to go along with Commissioner Franklin, my mom lives down the street. We sit on her front porch and she has an assigned chair and we're very, very careful. My kids haven't been out. Um, we've stayed right in our neighborhood to be super uber careful. Um, and we're FaceTiming a lot and we're doing other things like calling our older friends and checking in on them and trying to keep that social contact. I know this is hard on everybody. And just to reiterate, um, I would have been happy about the trails um, and Mrs. Madden's and supported that if it was strictly the walking trails, because I do think the physical activity is important. But the social distancing is critical and employers, I think most people are doing the right thing. Um, from what I hear, most of our friends in the business community and outside and out and about are taking this very seriously. But for people who aren't, please just try to make a safe environment for your employees that they are socially distanced, if they can work from home, let them work from home. Um, this is a really critical time. And although we don't see the numbers, uh, I think we just need to be cognizant that if we do the right things now, nothing will happen. And the goal is that nothing happens. The goal is that we don't have any deaths in Polk County. And so taking these precautions is really important. Um, but I am thankful to be in the Lakeland community. I think we have, again, a lot of people doing the right thing. I know that our nonprofit groups and our churches are stepping up to the plate to, to serve people in between, you know, the government side and the individual side of things. And, and I'm just, you know, pleased to see that. And I think a lot of people are coming together. We do need to take this seriously and we do need to unfortunately keep our distance, but I appreciate all of you. I know we've been uh, feeling a lot of different opinions and, you know, constituent um, priorities. And I appreciate the group that I work with here at the city commission, the city of Lakeland's done a bang up job. I think universally keeping, letting our employees work from home if they can. And um, I just, I appreciate everyone's leadership and, and the constituent input. Thank you so much. I agree with you completely. And the volunteerism of many of the businesses in terms of helping support needs that have been so quick uh, to take place. I mentioned in my comments, the universities, I want, you know, I had spent time with each university president that has residencies uh, in um, Lakeland, that which obviously is Florida Polytech, Florida Southern College, and Southeastern University. And they have worked their populations down to the absolute people that can't go home for some reason, international, or they don't have a place to go home population. And then also develop game plans so that if someone is infected, where do we put them? How do we isolate them? And how do we continue to, to monitor that? So I'm super pleased because several, uh, almost um, 300 students were reduced uh, from what was on campus from the beginning of that effort to where we are currently ju just by making sure people went home. And, and sometimes that's the case. Uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin, go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Commission. I'd be remiss if I didn't let you know that we're continuing to receive emails. Uh, what we're going to do with the communication staff, we're going to get those together for you and package them and forward them to each one of you. I, it's, it's, I think it's crucial that you also have a chance to, to read these as well because um, they, they continue to be in favor of closing facilities. But I just wanted to let you guys know that. I'd be remiss if I didn't share with you. Thank you very much. All right. Are there any other? Uh, yes, Commissioner McLeod. I, I just wanted to echo what many of you have said. And I think um, just so our folks know who are sending emails and contacting us that we read each one of those and mm -hmm. uh, we take that input seriously. And I believe, I truly believe we're all working toward the same goal. We all want the same thing. We want to slow down the spread. Uh, we want to minimize the number of cases in, in our county and in our city. Uh, there's some debate on the best way to do that. And we're having that now. Um, I, I think this, it continues to evolve. It's fluid. Uh, we've talked about being nimble and responsive uh, as a legislative body. And, and I hope we can continue to do that in the coming weeks. Um, I think, as many of you has, have mentioned, uh, that we continue to urge 
citizens in the community, leaders, organizations uh, to continue and keep up with social distancing practices, that that becomes part of our fabric over the next 30 days, uh, that we're all doing everything that we can um, so that maybe we don't have to come in and do a safer at home or stay at home order. That, that's my thinking uh, behind that. Uh, I would encourage Kevin and City Communications to continue to reiterate that. And I know we've got a lot of information that we're putting out, but just reminding people um, simply because we're relaxing um, some some facilities and, and parks and the, and the golf course and things like that doesn't mean that we are um, letting up in terms of, of how we view this, that we take this, you know, I'll go back to uh, Elaine Thompson's comments about we need to take this very seriously. And so that I, I think is crucial over the next 30 days and just to continue to, to remind people of that. Um, and I agree with Commissioner McCarley and everyone else. It's just, it's an honor to serve uh, next to you all and to hear your thoughts and what you bring to the table and know that we are all um, really pouring into these decisions and trying to do what, what we believe is best for our entire community. Concur. Any other comments for the good of the order? Is there a motion to adjourn? All right, I see. Uh, so, and, and, and a second with um, Commissioner McCarley. A motion from Commissioner Franklin. All those in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, same. Unanimously passes. Thank you very much for your time and input.